Yeah, we're taking Mr. Russell's table. Oh, certainly. Just as well. himself to me. For any particular reason? It seems like he was questioning whether or not my intentions were honorable. He has no right to do that. I think he was just worried about Carolyn, that's all. She's my responsibility. And his. What else did he say? Well, that was all. It was enough to make you angry. Well, I think I'm going to have the chef salad. It's light, but very filling. Mike. Do you suddenly get the feeling that we're being, um, propelled into something that neither one of us is ready for? No, I had the feeling that we were traveling along at our own rate of speed. Well, it, it suddenly seems a little fast. And you're looking around for a brake pedal or something. Well, I, uh, I think, I think we both need a chance to, to see where we're going and whether or not we want to go there. Maybe. I think I need that chance, Mike. You might. We both might. Well, let's take that chance after lunch, huh? Helen? Chef salad for me. Mrs. Russell's going to have what? To what do? am I going to have? Try the chef salad. All right, I'll have the chef salad. Chef salad. <laughs> and some coffee. The only thing I can cure, Stephen, a dry throat. That isn't my problem. Then you're really out of luck. Norm and Rod are my problem. Learn to live with it, baby. I wish it were that simple. Nothing's ever that simple with you, Stephen. This is strictly professional. Since when? Since I began representing them. Well, I wish I could help you out, but... Just not in the market for motorcycle. Concerns Rita, too. What concerns Rita? This is a lot like a confessional, you know that? What concerns Rita? People tell you things because they know you're blessed with instant amnesia. I know. I've done it a few times myself. Please, Stephen. What did Eddie tell you about the $50,000 he wangled out of Martin Payton? I'll need some answers if I'm going to handle this. There's nothing to handle. The kid's got the money, and Eddie had the satisfaction of doing the first unselfish thing in his life. How did he do it? If you can find him, ask him. He's probably parked under some grandstand waiting for his horse to finish. All right, Ada. He's still your husband, and you want to protect him. Just what do you think you have? Got a lot of loose ends. I thought you might be able to tie up before your daughter and her husband get tangled up in them. What's Eddie done? Left the evidence lying around? Straight out. Just tell me. All right. What was going on between Eddie and Harrington? Nothing. Well, you'll have a hard time convincing the police if it came to that. A deal. Some kind of a deal. Involving Peyton? I don't know. Promissory note. Ambiguous, isn't it? The services to be rendered. Well, that could mean almost anything. How did you get this? 
Peyton had in his briefcase when he checked into the clinic. But how did he get it? Did it have anything to do with the $50,000 he magnanimously bestowed on Norman and Rita? Now, that's another one of those loose ends, Ada. That's the exact figure Harrington promised to pay Eddie for those services to be rendered. And also the money Norman used to go into business with Rod. Eddie's blood money. That's kind of complicated, isn't it? Only because you're trying to make it out that way. You know what I think, Ada? I think Leslie Harrington hired your husband, Rita's devoted father, to kill the old man. Oh, no. But Eddie's a talker, not a killer. So he talked Peyton into buying this note. Gave Peyton a club to beat Harrington over the head with. And still left Eddie with $50,000. And something went wrong. Conscience, cold feet. And he made Peyton give Norman and Rita the money for the future which puts them right in the middle. Why? Why? How do they explain that money in this note? Coincidence? But they didn't know anything about it. But if I hadn't have borrowed it... Borrowed? Peyton's attorneys would be asking all kinds of embarrassing questions. And it wouldn't be too long before the police started asking the same questions, with a lot less tact. Eddie's gone, Harrington's gone, and Peyton's too sick to do anything but breathe. That leaves Norman and Rita to come up with the answers. What are you going to do with that note? Keep it. And use it yourself to hurt them? Ada, if I was going to do that, I wouldn't have wasted it on you. I don't believe you. Well, now you've got a problem. What do I do about it? Live with it. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Clue me in. I do not know what you're talking about. The plan, Susan. The plan. The one you have been hatching ever since you brought that girl in here. I don't want to listen to you. I'm here now with another scrap of paper. And my policy is to show them everything. Particularly this one. You're like the angel of death. It'll be a cold day when you bring good news. Good news. 